So as you guys are taking a seat, we're going to reorder the stage up here for just a minute for our elder conversation and really continue the message, uh, try to be as practical and helpful as we can. Uh, Paul and Daniel are going to join me up here on stage. We're going to talk about uh, budget as we go into 2024. We're going to talk about some things that are going on in life for our church, some things we're really excited about, and as these guys kind of get uh, in place. Uh, a little bit in the spirit of Thanksgiving, I was literally sitting out there thinking, uh, in January, really the end of this month, Jennifer and I will start our 14th year of ministry here at TCBC, and just what an incredible gift it's been to us and to our family that this is our church home. We're so grateful, uh, grateful for you, and not because they're sitting up here, but I will say this, one of my great, one of the greatest things to be grateful for is that we get to do this as a team. And the plurality we have as leaders and elders, and we're not in this alone, we get to share this together. But I just am grateful for you men on stage and our other pastors and our elders. I think our entire church benefits from that. So, man, thankful for you guys. Thanks for giving us a little moment here on stage together. Uh, all right, so let's get real practical. Let's talk about coming out of the message. Um, whichever one of you guys wants to take it first. So practically, as we talk about as a church, living generously and what that looks like. How do we do that? How can we do that as a church? How can we grow in that? Just give us some examples. Walk us through that. Yeah, so I, I can first. start. I didn't bring a present. It looks like you actually bring a pre brought a present to be generous. So that's pretty cool, <laughs> modeling the way. Application. Yeah, that's right, application. Um, I, I, you know, there's so many things that you said in the message, just walking through the passage that are so important. I, I think one that I don't want us to miss this morning is that we're talking about generosity generosity is a worship issue it, it fundamentally is it's where your treasure is there your heart will be also like you like you called us to and so I know for me personally uh you were talking about things you're thankful for Katie and I celebrated being married 17 years a couple weeks ago and I'm super thankful for that uh but I am not full disclosure like I'm not a generous person naturally uh <laughs> my wife is I tend to like hold on and want to be really really careful and Early on in marriage, I can remember like me working at Starbucks and her being a nanny and not having anything. And it was so hard to give. Uh, and I always thought, man, when I'm older and have a more steady job, then it'll be easy to give. And now I have four kids and a mortgage and it's not easy to yeah. give. Like that's just not natural for me. Yeah. And so I have to constantly wrestle with why do I not give a lot of times or not, why do I not want to give? And the issue is it's a worship issue. It's not trusting Jesus. Mm. It's not giving and it's putting him first. And so it's been a discipline. It's been something that we've had to fight for. And so I just would say, if, if you're kind of like me in the room, uh, it's a worship issue. So if, if you want to know where your heart is, look at your spending. You're spending in your time. You're spending in your money. And that'll tell you a lot about what you worship and what matters most. And so to remember, to know that generosity really is a worship issue, first and foremost. And then secondly, just really practically, generosity is a discipline. You know, so we've been going through Hebrews, and Hebrews 6, like the author says, go on to maturity. We've mm -hmm. talked a lot about that, like growing up, becoming more like Jesus. I don't think we can become mature in our faith if we're not generous. Mm -hmm. I, I just think in God's wisdom, that's one of the ways that he makes us more like Jesus. And so for everybody in this room, we say this a lot. You said it earlier in the message. You have a next step. For some, that means just adding. Like if you don't give now, start giving. Trust God. Say, well, where do I start? Well, 10% is a great place to start. That's a biblical number. Some might say, man, I can't do 10%. Well, start with a number you can that's stretching. And just give. Be generous. Start trusting God. That builds something into your heart. It re-centers you around God's kingdom. For some of us, that's to expand. So maybe you, you give generously. It's to go above and beyond that, uh, mm -hmm. to give more till it hurts, to, to trust God till it's an act of faith. For some, maybe it's to restore. Maybe you've had patterns of being generous and, and giving to gospel advancement, but life got hard, things got tight, and that stopped. And it's time to come back again. It's time to keep being obedient. So start somewhere. Start with 10%. Uh, study what does God's word have to say. So coming back to scripture, what does God's word call us to, to pray? 
Even in the spring, we're going to have a study group that's going to run for eight weeks on the discipline of generosity because it is a spiritual discipline, act of worship. You can jump into that, learn more. Um, And then the last thing I would just say really practically is talk about it. Mm -hmm. If you're married, you should talk about it with your spouse, about your heart in that. If you're in a fellowship group, or you're in an equip group, a go group, this seems really radical, but talk about your giving with brothers and sisters in Christ. We do this in our fellowship group, and it's awkward, uh, but it's helpful because it helps me be honest with what's going on in my heart. It helps those brothers know how to pray for me. It brings accountability in because we want to become more like Jesus together. So there's a few ways that you could begin to respond. Super helpful. Yeah, all of that. um, And I would just say, as you give, and, you know, as a local church, we understand and see the New Testament example that that first portion goes through that local body. It's given together, and then they give over and above and all those kinds of things. Giving isn't just financial. Yeah. Like, when we think of giving as worship, I mean, that includes our time, that includes our hospitality. It's really giving of ourselves in worship to the Lord. And so Paul mentioned something that I just want to make sure you catch that's, hard for me it is a discipline in other words generosity faithful giving doesn't just happen to you Uh, we have to pursue it it is a grace-filled effort like so many other spiritual disciplines and acts of worship we are required obligated by our faith to worship and discipline in other words we pursue it We actually do things. And so I'll give you two really simple ones. He said one, you talk about these things in your household. Talk about giving. There's accountability in that. There's also celebration in that, right? You mentioned that. There's encouragement in that. But you've got to talk about it. Set goals. Be excited. uh, But talk about it. The other thing you can do that really will help you is to begin to pray about it. And just real quick poll, just no pressure, but... How many of you guys pray before meals? Pray before meals? Family pray? See, that's most of you in the room. Okay, now think about this. What's happening in that moment? You are recognizing that God, the sustainer, is giving you the very food you need to keep you alive. And you're praising him for it. You're seeing him in that role as the sustainer, right? That's the same thing we do when we give. We acknowledge that it's all his. And we're connected. We're alive in him and we give. Pray over your giving in those meals with your family. Normalize that. It will make those practices and keep that act of worship in front of you. Even more so today in a digital society where it's not like we're coming into the service with cash or like giving like, you know, the the fruit that we've grown or the the livestock back in the day. It's just kind of digital, so it's out there. So those moments in your family routine and your prayer, they go a long way to training our heart to see that as worship and it not just be routine or obligation yeah so i I just encourage too as you talked about preparing i hope you guys receive something on saturday that's called a gathering guide it prepares you to come in here and worship one of the things i encourage you to do is use that as a tool parents if you have young children in the home or older children home prepare to come in here and worship an aspect of that may be preparing to give man one of the greatest things you can do parents in the lives of your children is to talk about it model it teach it encourage your children to learn that discipline that overflows into joy ultimately of giving and teach it in the home to get you, teach your kids you have a weekly reminder called the gathering to remind us to do that leverage that use that in your home so super good stuff um all right so let's switch a little bit today's the day in the year uh when you came in you or you should have seen out here at the door there's uh, what's really a summary of our operating budget, thank you, Vanna, I mean Daniel, uh, of our budget for 2024 as a church. I'm going to be completely transparent, I want you to see all that, open for questions, all that. We'll talk about how that looks in just a minute. We're going to talk through that, what are some things maybe that we want to highlight in that budget, because a budget really does reveal priorities in the life of a church. I want to also say, you hold a paper in your hand Uh, that is really the composite of months and months and months of work from our team and volunteers and staff to put this kind of thing together. This process begins like back in August, if not before. Uh, Particularly Lisa Ferguson, Pastor Cameron uh, have worked really hard 
to lead us and put this thing together and even restructure our whole budget. And you say, okay, what's the big deal? So that we can be better stewards as a church. And I just want to publicly thank them and all the people that work really hard to put this thing together. Mm -hmm. So with that, who wants to go first? What are some highlights we see in our budget 2024? Yeah, so just want to echo what you said. I'm so thankful for the people who work so hard to put this together so that we can walk in stewardship, transparency yeah. alongside our body. And when, when you read the budget, you're not just looking at numbers or line items. What I want you to do is look at purpose, that all of these numbers represent purposes, pursuits, intentionality to advance the gospel through this church that you get to be a part of and that you get to not just give to, but participate in. So when we think about like gathering budget, and you kind of look at some of those different categories that are around our, our practices, so abide and gather, and equip and go. You know, this coming year, as we come into 2024, uh, we're going to be walking through the books of Ephesians and Philippians. And I'm just so excited for us to pursue that together as a church family. There's been so many people, many of you have talked to me about how impactful Hebrews has been and all the resources tied to it. And we've talked in go groups and things like that, just how God's used his word to change us. And I'm just so excited for that to happen again next year. And a lot of the, the resourcing that goes around us being in the word together year by year, it, it comes with investment. And so that's one of the things that we're praying for, that God changes us as we study these epistles together. When you think about equip, we, we've talked a lot about disciple making and discipleship. That's a major emphasis for us in 2024. We want to give more time and resourcing to put tools in your hands to be disciples who make disciples. You know, we've said again and again, like Jesus' call in the Great Commission is not just given to few. We talk about neighbors yeah. and nations. It's for all of us to go make disciples. So the question is not, should I go, but am I going? And who should I go to? And so we want to be able to take things like behind the message and equip and the, the resource center and all those kind of things and to make it more accessible to you so that you can go make disciples. We want to do that in homes. We'll talk about Advent in a minute, but we want to make sure that moms and dads, grandparents, caregivers, that you have the resources and support that you need to be able to lead your sons and daughters to grow in Jesus. That's represented in this budget. And there's, there's things that you know, we want to grow in as a church. One of the needs we see in our area uh, and we see in our church family is for solid biblical counseling. So one of the emphasis within the budget is to how do we come alongside of our church family, you guys, and be more intentional, provide godly, biblical, Christian counseling that can serve you, but also serve those outside of our church in our area. So those are just a few things I would call attention to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and then there's the go side of that that, as he says, equips, really mobilizes us out to our neighbors and our nations. Uh, one of the things when you look through a budget, you'll see stuff, like there's keyboards and lights and electric bills and stuff, but hopefully you see a lot of people, yeah. a lot of mobilization, because that's how ministry happens, right? It's people that make a difference in one another's lives. It's people who proclaim the gospel. And so you see that mobilization of people here and abroad. And so what that equipping does is it brings about a charge and a resourcing and equipping that you and I go out with the good news of the gospel. As we talk about giving, we have to just really reckon with the fact that, man, we want to be part of something bigger than ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so in Go, we hold up these what we call go pursuits there's five of them that kind of categorize what we aim to do and as you listen through to all the budget stuff today I just want to say this this is kind of a quick overview if you're really detailed and you want to be in all the numbers and look at every account and see do we have the most efficient way to do this our stewardship team would love to connect with you they'd love to help that, that's not really what we're trying to do in this exact moment I want my 13 year old to understand why we do the thing that we do yeah I wanted to understand the principal pursuits behind them. And so I could spend hours talking to you about some of the go things, but let me just try to summarize them through those go pursuits as quick as I can, okay? So first, we, we aim to serve the vulnerable. And through our giving, both in our regular giving, our budgeted giving, and our missions fund, which is an over-above fund called Give to Go, 
we mobilize those things. And those are two different things. So when you give to the church and your general fund, we take a portion of that, a good portion of that, and we mobilize to missions. But we also create an opportunity, a missions fund to give to where your every dollar goes out to advance the gospel through those five go pursuits. Now, if you're already doing things over and above that are good, healthy things, you know, you give the Lottie Moon, you do this, that's great. Keep doing that. That's missional giving. But if you don't have a place to get started and you want to lean in, it's a great resource. And so one of the things that we do is we serve the vulnerable. We come alongside of hurting people from Israel to Ukraine yeah. to Gray. Yeah. And we use their needs to create a bridge to communicate and share the gospel. And so we do that globally. We do that locally with ministries like Agape who come alongside of women in crisis pregnancies and offer counsel and communicate the value of life and who God is in that. It's just an incredible thing. We train leaders and in all kinds of different settings from really the bush in Uganda to pastors who don't even know how to read and we're trying to get them the Bible and figure out how to get that in their language and come alongside of them and resource them to serve their tribe and their community to major seminaries in places like Nigeria that are a growing population, places in countries that we can't say because we're recording. And then here we have a leadership training program that raises up church planners and pastors that serve not just Tri-Cities, but our local area and are sent out. We train leaders, really cool stuff. We send disciples. Think about that, you hear us talk about like kind of our handles for that where there are go moments. You go to equip because the reality is you are on mission. Every day you go to work, you don't go to work just to make a paycheck. You don't go to work to just help Eastman, right? You go to work on mission to proclaim the gospel. And so we wanna help you have go moments. You'll hear an example, one of those coming up with Advent in just a minute. But we have go trips where we wanna send you outside of just your area in a short term mission trip. That may be in the U.S., it may be to the other side of the world. There are go seasons, like journeyman program and two-year opportunities. And then there are go stays where we're giving you a one-way ticket. Don't come back. <laughs> we send disciples. But we don't want to just do that as a local church. Listen, we want to have a multiplying impact. We talked about this back in August. We've had a great opportunity. Mike has led that for our church to come alongside of NAM church planners here in the U.S., lead them on trips to connect them to IMB missionaries overseas. And the idea of those trips is to connect those like new churches with these great mission works so that that constant pipeline of sending disciples would continue. We started last year and there were five of those. And it's worked so well that NAMIS came alongside us, can we keep doing that? And we're gonna see Mike continue to step into that role. We told you we'd come back with some details. The reality is that he's going to do that, and he's going to kind of wear two hats going forward. The majority, like his full-time employment will come through NAM. He's not leaving anywhere. He's going to stay here. He's going to continue to be a pastor, lead pastor, teach, all those things. But he's going to lead about 10 trips a year, connecting 100-plus yeah. NAM church planners with missionaries each year and building it. We get to be part of that as a church. That's a multiplying work. That has a sacrificial impact for us. But man, a gospel advancing way to send disciples to reach the nations. Really cool thing. We reach the unreached. We partner with organizations to advance the gospel. Hope you guys were here through Neighbors and Nations. You got to hear Zane. We are partnering with organizations that go into communities and tribes and places where no one has heard the name of Jesus. And we get to be part of that. We call you to go share the gospel with your neighbors. We try to equip you in places like equip on Wednesday night and through groups. You realize the ministries, you may not think about it this way, we have a cool preschool ministry. You know, those little ones come in, and some of them, they come in, they're brought in, especially through programs like Little Arrows and different things. They never heard the name of Jesus till they show up on this campus. We have the opportunity to do that. We mobilize to that. And we plant churches as people come into the faith they are called to join together in local assemblies and we help that happen from Durango to Africa and around the world yeah. 
It's a really cool thing we get to be part of that. And so what I want you to hear in that, yeah, you can meet with Mike, you can connect with our GO team, you can sit down with our stewardship team, go through all those details, but listen, we are serious about making disciples. It is our mission. We are called to do this thing. Why? Because God is worthy of the worship of the nations of all creation. And so when you leave today, don't just leave thinking giving. Leave thinking worship that we get to be part of this cool thing that God is doing in our midst and around the world. It's a really sweet thing. I'm thankful to be part of a church that puts that much strategic effort into pursuing those go pursuits. It's incredible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I hope the response of that's like the church at Corinth, that, yeah, I want to be a part of that. I want to, get, I want to be a part of that, something bigger than me. All right, we're going to talk about Advent, something coming up, really exciting life for our church, but let me, or I'll forget. So you have that budget. Uh, it's not our budget, it's our budget, our church family's budget. Here's the encouragement. We've got two weeks, so we present that. We ask you over the next two weeks, familiarize yourself, look over it, pray over it. At least one time, sit down with your family, just read over that, pray over that. We'll come back on December 10th as a church and we will affirm that budget you have questions you want more detail just like Daniel said reach out to one of your elders reach out to our stewardship team give you all the information you want to know before that December 10th date rolls around yeah there's like a 15 page version of this if you want more (laughs) detail online you can find that through the app or the website so if you want more and if you look at that and you still want more you can meet with Cameron he'll sit down go through every line item they talked about the work that they put in this year Uh, we changed our entire accounting system this year so that we would be even that much more efficient. I just want to tell you, if you have any background in that, you know how much work that has been from our staff and leaders that have contributed to that. They have worked diligently. So again, if you want more detail, it's all there. It's all open-handed. Lean in, chase it. Yep, it's good. All right, Advent's coming up. Carry us through December. When you guys, what's that look like for us? How do we engage? What's, What's it going to be? Tell us about Advent. Yeah, I'll just speak to it personally for a second, and you can give any specific details. So I just want to say as a dad, uh, this is just such a cool opportunity as a parent or as a grandparent to lean in and make Jesus the most important, significant part of December. You know, so even though the family yesterday, we kind of asked the kids, like, within reason, like, what is one thing that you want to do today because it's Christmas time? So, like, we're outside with our Santa hats on playing a family football game together, and just you, you feel the pressure to make things special. And I just want to encourage you, in this season, let's make the most important thing to talk about Jesus. And Advent as a church is an opportunity where every Sunday morning, the preaching text is the same mm-hmm. as the family discipleship plan. Yeah. So same big truth, same big ideas, all kind of resources around it. It makes it really simple. And so as a dad, I'm really thankful for our family team and all the work they've put in to make it easy to sit down and have gospel conversations over the next four weeks. You can tell us a little bit more about some of the resources that are there. Sure. So if you go to tcbchurch.org slash advent, you'll find this, all the stuff I'm talking about, a video that explains it all. But we really want to make this a season to remember the birth of Jesus in order to anticipate his second coming. That's what Advent means. It means coming. Listen, if we really understand Christmas, it causes us to look forward, not look back. And there's great resources around that to help us as a church. So we'll be teaching through an Advent series beginning next week. Dr. Troy Temple is going to kick that off for us. He is the Dean of the School of Divinity at Liberty University. And more significantly to us personally as a local church, our leadership training program that we started about a decade ago that has made such a difference in the life of our church and our community, it does not happen without him. And so we've asked him to come celebrate with him put our arms around him and just kind of say thank you. But he's going to kick off that Advent series and we're going to go through it. Again, you have a reading plan. It's right outside the doors, okay? It's also online. Grab one of those and be prepared to kind of read through this Advent series with us. So you have a reading plan, okay? Right outside the doors. You've got some other things that are going to be pretty cool too. First, there's a night of worship coming later. It's on a Wednesday night. It's connected to our regular stuff. We'll all come in here. Matt Papa's going to join us, lead us in worship. It'll be kind of in, not replacing our Christmas Eve service, but the way Christmas Eve falls, it's actually on a Sunday. We'll be here for our regular services that day. So that Wednesday before, we're going to have a night of worship, come together as a church family, sing, praise, and set our mind on the things of the Lord two resources I want to make sure you get, all right? 
this little card is over here by this little picture station. They'll be there throughout the month. All right, inside, there's an invite to that, uh, that night of worship with us. And it's a way for you to just write a gospel message. Lots of times we have three names. Some of you guys have been here for a long time. But you can have a missional card, write out, bring uh, an invitation, bring someone with you that night, share the gospel. But it's just a simple Christmas card. You can take your picture. If you're really pretty, I'm not. You can take your picture, put it in here, give them a picture. It's just great, whatever you need to do. But there's an opportunity for you guys to have a missional Christmas card right back out there as well. Also for our families, we have these Advent kits. If you dropped off your kid in uh, groups this morning, they got one of these. If you didn't, go get them. There's all kinds of good things in here. There's, there's candy. Uh, there are chocolate chips to make cookies and give away. Again, missional opportunities. There's great resources, all kinds of stuff. I won't give it all away, but you want to make sure you have one of those as a family. Finally, at the doors also, there's an opportunity for Christmas give, okay? Christmas give is an opportunity for us as a church to give over and above our regular offerings to advance the gospel. One of the things we've kind of consistently said is make your largest Christmas present a gospel advancing present. Yeah. So again, I'm just giving you the fire hydrant version tcbchurch.org slash advent breaks all that down there are resources all out there to make this a really special season to not just get caught up in all kind of the cultural christmas stuff but to make it a christ-centered christmas that aims our heart to anticipate his second coming awesome all right great december coming up church a lot to be thankful for a lot to be grateful for guys thanks for that everything you heard again resources are out there you can go investigate those on your own i'm going to dismiss us uh again if you're here you have questions about our church what it means to be a member here if you have questions what it means to be a follower of jesus you need someone to pray with you this morning whatever that is when i dismiss in just a second through those doors to the left stop by the hub we'd love to talk with you this morning let me pray and dismiss us as a church family Father, thank you for this morning. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the joy of gathering. Thank you now that we get to go out on mission to make you known. Thank you for what's ahead of us in the month of December as a church. And Lord, we love you because you first loved us. In Jesus' name, amen.